Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name's Paula, and down below me is Matthew. Uh, perhaps, maybe, you just might recognize us from our weekly gameplay streams that are right here on Gen Con TV. This game gets dicey, but that's not what we're here for today. That's why there are two extra people here. Today is the first day of the Gen Con Spring Spring. Spring. The Gen Con Spring Showcase. Uh, and we are going to talk about a few games from Calliope Games. So joining us today, we have Chris Leader, who is, I scrolled past my notes here, the director of fun at Calliope yeah. Games. Chris, hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. I <laughs> and we also Don't have, have fun Franklin. on the king of fun. Oh no. Like, oh no, it's so much <laughs> fun. I will direct fun directly <laughs> at you if you don't watch out. <laughs> and then Ken Franklin also joining us, who is the senior yeoman at Calliope Games. I'm the old guy who gets the rough stuff done. <laughs> Hi. So, Hi. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to be here and talk about some of your games. Um do you want to tell us just a little bit about Calliope Games in general as as a publisher? Who who are you? Oh, oh, oh we're gonna get. Am I gonna cry? Uh, I'm, maybe. Oh my goodness, goodness. we're gonna get deep. deep. <laughs> so, uh, Calliope Games um, to gamers were often known as the gateway or the filler uh, game mm. company. So. All of the games that we make are playable in a short amount of time. They don't take a long time to learn, um, but they're a lot of fun. They take, they're really quick. So if you're a gamer and maybe you've got a, a friends or family who don't play a lot of games, we're a good game to pull out to play. Um, they'll get people interested in what gaming can do if they're mm -hmm. only used to kind of like the classic old stuff. So we kind of open people's eyes to the wider world of games. And we also teach uh, kind of some basic stuff like worker placement and bidding and bluffing and like, you know, stuff that games do these days. Kind of like the building blocks of yeah. mechanisms yeah. that you can take with you into now, heavier. Calliope does have a couple of legendary games. One, of course, is Soro, Game of the Path. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the other, uh, Roll for It, um, mm -hmm. the Yahtzee Killer by a guy named Chris Leader. Oh, he's in the room. Wait, who? That sounds so familiar. Huh? Well, that's, that game sounds amazing. <laughs> that's my favorite of the whole catalog. Obviously. I love it. <laughs> nice. I'll say, I know right now, at least for me personally, in kind of, not to bring it down, the stress of pandemic life, I have myself been feeling much more lately. Like I just want more games that are of that kind of like filler level um, rather than something that's going to be super heavy and require a bunch of brain power. So this all sounds honestly perfect for me and where I'm at mentally right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's kind of amazing. You know, uh, the games that we make are, uh, they were discovered in a big way during the pandemic for sure. Mm, I mean, we saw yeah. We saw scale uh, the sales go way up because that's exactly right. People need entertainment that they can play with the people they're kind of stuck in a house with for a long period of time. And sometimes that's a big, long three hour, you know, epic game. But a lot of times it's, we want to sit down and play like three or four shorter games. And so you yeah. can bang out a couple of games of Sorrow, you know, roll for it. Games like Ship Shape and Ancestry that we're going to play today are perfect mm -hmm. for that because we're also, we accommodate big groups of people. I mean, you can play a lot of our games two players, but a lot of our games go up to six or eight or even 12 players in the, in the case of Hive Mind, which is our, our party game. But depending on who you're playing with, you know, you may need something that's going to let everyone sit at the table. And so a game that only plays to four, if you're stuck in a house with six people, that means two right. people might be left out. We don't want to do that. Team, well, like the, weird team play. Right. <laughs> the other the other thing about though is that um, the eight and up crowd can play on an even footing with the adults mm. without having to shepherd them or bend the rules. Uh, they're because they are all easy to learn. So they're. Um, I have I run game nights with groups from eight to eighty five, mm -hmm. and Calliope Games hit the table a lot. Yeah. That is nice when it's something that kind of runs the gamut of age. And maybe as an adult, you don't have to dumb down your own play to feel like your kid or the kid you're playing with is able to join in with you and have a good time. 
Yeah. And we, I mean, the games are all designed to be played by adults. We want everyone who's, you know, in, in, in college, adults, whatever it is, you can be sipping on a beverage and you could be enjoying our games. But if you've got kids, instead of you having to go, oh, we got to play that game with the kids, they can step <laughs> up and play a game that is for adults, but that they can understand and they can participate and compete in knowing that they might win. There's always kind of an element of luck to our games because we want to keep everything on an even footing, but there's enough strategy there that adults can have a good time. Yeah. Why, here's an example of it on the table in front of us. Ooh, <laughs> Let's go, go, go and look at it. Go right into uh, to the first game we want to take a look at today, which is Ship Shape, right? Yes, Ship Shape yeah. by uh, a designer that some people may have heard of, Rob Davio. Of... I've never. Yeah. No <laughs> idea. You may not have heard of him because you didn't get to that part of the legacy campaign. You may have ripped up that card. <laughs> I ripped up that card. I'm like, wait. <laughs> Designed by, well, who cares? Never who mind. knows? It's, it's forever. thrown out now. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is about ship shape is you can definitely play it like a legacy game. You can throw the tiles out at the end of your game and then just buy a new copy. Buy a new copy. You <laughs> buy a new copy every time you play. That's great. Yeah, Do it. That's it. That's how we make this a legacy. <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> why sales went up during yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So this is so ship shape is um uh was out of print for a while. We we hmm. released it and it sold like crazy. And uh because of world events, it took us a while to get it back in hmm. stock. And now it's back. And so we have a uh, huge list, a uh, big old long scroll rolling across the floor of names of people who are like, when can I get this game again? So we're very excited that it's back in stock and um, we are able to demonstrate it to people and yeah. uh, get their hands on it. So if people see it now today and are like, that looks fun, they can get it today. Yes. Yes, nice. absolutely. I have a van parked out back. I sell Perfect. it right out of that cash. By the food trucks. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's totally available now, though. It's uh, it's available on our website. It's available at game stores. It's everywhere. You can get it wherever you want it. That's calliopegames.com, right? calliopegames.com. That's correct. Yes. And this one just like, you know, it kind of fits into that filler category, you'd say. So it plays in, what's the amount of time you feel, you know, you feel like it Oh, this, this game is, like I would say easily you could play this in a half hour, even if you're playing with six people. Um, you know, if you've got oh, nice. people who are really, really thinkers, it might take a little bit longer. But the nice thing about this game is it can play with up to six players, um, two to six, and it's mostly simultaneous play. That's so nice. everything you're doing in this, it's not going to take a long time. So this mm -hmm. game goes really, really fast. Um, a lot of times you play it once and you're like, okay, nope, we got to set this thing back up because I lost, but I'm going to, I'm going to win. I got to play again. Yeah. So yeah, I have, I have never demoed this game at a convention where it took more than 45 minutes. Nice. And this so, is a game too. I've played this one um, in real life and uh, it's one where it's got like, you're like stacking. It's kind of builds up in this 3d kind of way. Now we're going to show it off digitally here, but when you play this in real life, it's like you're building kind of pieces up to reveal and cover certain things on a, on a card. Right. Yes, that's exactly right. And I will say preview, you know, here we go. Spoiler alert. In a couple of minutes, we're going to hit this button because there's four of us playing. We're going to hit the stack of 12. And, and you're going to see Ken here, our senior yeoman, created this tabletop simulator mod. And it's fantastic. And it will show you exactly how that situation works. So nice. um, if you want, we can dive in and I can kind Push of uh, talk our way awesome. through. How yeah. this work? Okay. Push Let's the button. Do it. Push. So, well, well, hold on, hold on. You have to wait a second, Ken. We're excited. Here's the deal. We are all ship captains. Don't call us pirates. We don't hurt people. We're just eh, maybe smugglers. I would go that far, but we are. We all have our own ship. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this voyage one. I'm going to I'm going to shuffle these up and I'm going to give everybody one of these. Uh, voyage cards and I'm going to say goodbye to the rest so you can flip over your voyage card okay is this available to play on tabletop simulator in general it it is <laughs> at this point it's kind of like by appointment we haven't opened our games up to gotcha. everybody yet but that's because we're still setting them up but we definitely want to do that so if there's people who want to play hit us up on our discord server and we will be happy to play with people that is Chris. exactly why I asked that that's yes. what people in chat were saying yes Chris uh -huh. There, there are rats in the hold of my ship. Yeah, so these are our ships, and yeah, oh, no, me too. Listen, well, how could this there, happen? They, they listen. Ships need to cross the ocean, you know, so they're on our boats. 
So these are our holds and you'll notice it's a three by three grid mm -hmm. and there are some rats on there that are going to score against our score. So you got to be careful of this, but we need to get stuff to put onto these holds. We're each going to get three crate tiles per round or voyage. So let's hit the button. I swear I can oh, I can't wait for it to happen. Boom. Yeah. It's just All such right. a good when tabletop simulator scripts like populate out <laughs> that's all ken ken button they all randomize and become back, which is three times the number of players and okay. if you look straight down into it you'll notice that each of these pieces i'm going to cheat for a second here i'm just going to take this one you'll notice that they have different cutouts like mm. puzzles do um and each of these tiles has three values, one of contraband, which is purple, one of gold, which is uh, gold, and one of uh, cannons, which is black. Okay. Now they always add up to eight. So when I put this back on here, you'll notice that when you look down into the stack, you can see certain values. Remember, there's one of each of the things, they always oh. add up to eight. So you can do a little deductive reasoning and figure out what some of the missing numbers might be. But uh -huh. what we're going to be yeah, but what we're going to be doing is we have a hand of cards. They are one through 10. We all have the same uh, characters and, and they're all one through 10. We will be bidding to try to get these crate tiles and put them on our holds and cover up these rats. So when you bid, whoever's highest is going to get the top one. Whoever's next highest is going to get the next uh, one in the stack and so on and so forth. If there's okay. any ties... Those people have to wait. Everybody else goes in, in order. And then the tied people will rebid for their tiles. Copy. So knowing what you can see here and kind of when you look down a little bit, um, what you want to do is uh, pick a card you want to bid. I, I recommend hitting F to flip the card while it's in your hand and then lay it in front of you. Are all of our ship holds the same? Oh, no, they aren't. There's I no see. Seat. So where so my not, rats notice, are You'll is notice not that the, the same. number. Yeah, the number at the top tells you the difficulty of it. So mm. six is the most difficult down to one. And I completely what? took number one. I'm five. I'm a, cheater. <laughs> I'm a cheater and he's number five. So I did that on purpose um, because I think Matthew's getting a little bit too full of himself lately. You know I just what? think he kind of needed to take him down a peg. <laughs> he I does do like beat a... me in our gameplays every week often. It's not cool. It's uh, we've noticed, Matthew. It's just, pretty you know, cool. Let's be honest. But yeah, I appreciate. I appreciate what. What were you going to say, Matthew? Oh no, no it's just the fact I didn't realize that everything added up to eight, and that means that you can have a make a meaningful decision, at least as far as going to picking the second tile. And right. that just makes that just adds strategy to the game that yeah, I didn't, like, even didn't know that was didn't know was there. That's interesting. If you get down to like the third tile, like just to be ch cheaty here. You can look down and see like where there might be stuff. Now, before you choose, I will give one quick scoring note. So once mm -hmm. we've done this bid and we've each taken three tiles, we're going to do this three times. So this whole uh, stack is exhausted. We will each have taken three. When we score, the scoring will be that the gold, you're going to get the full value of all the gold, but only the gold that you can see when you look down into your hold. You cover up gold. So you don't want numbers, to cover it up. You don't get them. So gold is oh good, boy. except you, and then the, the rats will count against the gold that you get. The cannons, you want to have lots of cannons because whoever has the lowest amount of cannons doesn't score anything for cannons. Everybody else gets their value minus whatever the lowest value at the table was. So um, I've got and 10 then, and Paul has got two. I get eight points. Wow. Yes, exactly. Yes. So it's, it's your value minus the lowest oh. at the table. So if you are the lowest at the table, you get nothing. And then there's contraband. Whoever has the most, the highest value in contraband gets busted and gets nothing for contraband, the purple. Everybody else, while that person's getting busted, sneaks in with their full value of contraband. So, oh, Chris, Chris, I have this question from the chat that I just made up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what happens if two people play a card out here and they bid the same number? So that is what is known as a, a tie. Oh, I was um, going to say this. I was going to ask this question. Yeah, and so the... <laughs> Again, the, Good question, uh, chat. the tied players will set their crew card aside. The people who didn't tie will take their tiles in order from top to bottom of value. And then the tied people will rebid a new card and try to get what they want. And the cards that you're playing, you will not pick the cards back up into your hand 
until you're down to one card. And so at that it. point, you get to pull them back up again. And that might not Ooh. happen until the second or third uh, yeah. voyage around because, you know, the more you tie, the quicker you get your cards right. back. Mm. So it's sort of like it's it's not good to tie, but it is good to tie. All right. So we've, we've all placed our card out. So when I say I three, let's all go. I thought long and hard about this. Okay. Ready? One, two, Ready? three. And flip. Oh, okay. Oh, so, tie. so in this case, five is the highest. So Matthew, you're getting the top, the top Ooh. one there. Ken now I'm getting a, a boatload of contraband. And here. now we put our crew member aside. Oh, that is okay. a lot of now remember, oh, Matt, you may, you may now flip we, and rotate that. Yes. And yeah, when you take your, your thing, you can rotate, you can flip it any which way you want to make it fit on your board. Now we have a little bit of different information about what's mm. here. So this is just me and Paula because we tied. I am going to, be... I'm going to try to not have analysis paralysis over this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this card. One, two, three. Ready? Flip. Flip. All right. I All will right. take the top and you get the next one. I and... love, man, I love the way these characters all look. And Matthew, just, if you'll some, like, take she's your card. She's so sassy. The card I just played out, she's like... Yes, yes. She's like the, the deckhand who's actually really in charge of the ship kind oh, of a yeah. situation. Yeah. Okay, so now I take this one. I, you know what? I'm not... Oh, I can rotate it around. Okay, yeah. hold on. Oops, and you that's... can flip it. Oh, it so they can be mirrored well, yeah. too. Look, this is... Oh, wait, does it go like that? Yeah, yep. do that. Yeah. Nicely done. And it is, a, yeah, the, the other side is exactly the, the same thing on the other side. So, all right. So now do we I are. Wanna, you know what? I'm actually going to rotate this. Sorry, everyone. Well, I'm going right. to I'm gonna make it so it covers up the top instead. Because yeah. now I only have a minus one rat showing instead of a minus three. That Galaxy strats. No one saw that. I didn't. I was paying I attention to my I did not flip my stuff. car before I let, I, I let it to sun, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. I don't like that one bit. So, and, and the, the fun thing about this, both this version and the physical one is you end up you know, like kind of standing up, craning your neck, looking yeah. around. Yeah, I was just doing to, that. I'm, I was... <laughs> I'm rotating around here in Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> okay. Let's it's also do. really tough yes. to get a middle one if you want a middle card because you just don't know what can people consider to be like a uh, a low number or a high number in this. All right. Are you ready? You're right. And flip. Flip. Oh, we're all different. No ties at all. Look right. at this. Oh, man. Number 10. Again, I just, an eight. I love, I'm pretty I just sure love I'm all winning. the characters. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm not going to stop talking about this it. Is, that one. This I'm... is not a good, this is not, I've realized that. Mm, actually, no, this is great. This Last. Is what have I got story. here? Okay. How how in the world is this going to work? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the deal with the cannons again? If I have the most cannons, it's bad? It's your you amount don't... minus the lowest. And there's a fancy, fancy little uh, guide right on your <gasps> phone that'll tell of you. Of course there is. But yeah, what it's basically cannons are your value minus the lowest of the table. Uh, so actually, if you are the lowest of the table, you get zero for it. Actually, I'm pretty I thrilled with what I've got going on right just now. Just so you know. We have one bid remaining. Yes. Oh, and the last one is a full hold. If you manage to, to cover your entire hold, all nine spots... You get eight bonus gold at the end of the voyage. That's pretty good. What what's everyone's cannon situation? We got it. Zero two. zero cannons. Oh one, yeah. One cannon. Yeah, and this is tough because if you look at what's on top here, it's only a one, but both of the ones underneath are a five. So mm, yes. Look, I've got a strategy. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty good at games. I'm going for it. <laughs> I'm, you know what? Your I'm amount good at games. The... I'm trying to have just fun. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um... I'm stressed out. I'll be honest. I'm incredibly stressed out. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know. Let's. Uh, I think this person looks cool, so I'm going to play them. I do All like right. the fact. That's a good like way to choose. You... All right. I do like the fact that you can be doing <laughs> this. <and it> just... <laughs> Chris and I tied. I got a seven. I got I've a won, four. As far as I'm concerned, I've won every time because I've always got the, <laughs> the top. There you thing. go. There okay. you go. I'll be honest, did not want this one. <laughs> there you go. Paula I gets think I'm that second. One. So let's see what I can do with this. What were you saying, Matthew? Something that you were liking or found interesting? I have forgotten. Did it's, you forget uh, it? That's yes. also fine. All right. 
I'm playing. Oh, this it's just card. that. It's just that you. You can plan and plan and plan, right? Ready? But someone might Flip. play an eight. Oh no! Just, so. So, in because this case, we tied a second time. Because we tied a second time, we go by our hold number, and since Ken has a higher number, he breaks the tie with that and takes the one I needed. Right, so we'll do that. Not I the best. My ship. I have so many cannons. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now that we've all at the end of our voyage, I'm gonna give you a card back over. Thank here. you very much. Um, once at the end of the voyage here, uh, we will first count up your value of gold and then subtract any rats that are showing. So for me, it's ten because I have six and six minus the two. So I'm gonna pull one of these. Aha! Uh -huh. I have five gold, three and two, and no rats. Thirteen for me. Four for me. Didn't do great in gold. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, cannons. I have One six. Cannon, baby. I have eight. I have 15 cannons. Ooh. I'll be honest. It's kind of, it's a bit showy off it if you got 15 Yeah, a little cannons. bit. Yeah. I've got one cannon. Does me oh, I get right. So I That's got because six you're a man of one peace. Is five. I'm a man of peace. And man of peace. And so, gold. all of us will get uh, our value minus one. So, four... That's no, 15. No, 14. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All good. Oh, boy. Three. And now, contraband. I have five. I'm I have two. Two. And there's Matthew over there smuggling in six contraband. I was so sure you were going to have, because you got, you didn't you have an eight one earlier? Yes, I did. Oh, I was like, covered oh, it up. Now, Quick question. My yeah. esteemed friend in chat says, so you bid on the lower frames and you don't necessarily know what they are. Can the lower frames be better or is the top one always the best? I'm thinking they're randomly shuffled, right? So that's yeah. correct. What yes. might be good for you could be anywhere in there. So you're trying it's, to figure out looking. Yes. Is the top one best or do I think one below might be better? And yeah. do I strategically want to try and bid so that I'm second to choose? Or it last is just to like the lyrics to the theme song to different strokes. What might be right for you may not be right for some. Mm -hmm. yes. sure. I don't know it's why that partially is. buried treasure, Paula. Yeah, you, you, they're completely randomized. <gasps> yeah, and so, yeah, that you just never know. And then... So, so, agreeing that I win? Yeah. So now if we've got... And no one had a full ship. No. So Big time, not. What we would do here is um, all of our crate tiles have been delivered. So you can throw those into, is it the cargo, Ken? No, the recycling bin. Recycling. Ah. So you can throw it into the recycle because all of our stuff goes in there. Mine's on top. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Highlight. Oh, and no. We keep, we keep our uh, hold cards where they are. And what will happen is, this is where there's a little bit of a rubber banding. So um, whoever has the most coins gets the most difficult card. Ah, one. So, so a little bit of a, a balance catch up kind of mechanism. Yeah. So when we put these out, uh, this one would go away. Um, we would flip these. Whoops. And let's see. I've got 19. All I have 20. Holly gets I, the six. So you would I get, get the, the, one. the six. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of rats. Yeah. And mine already has three cannons. And I get the five. Yeah. And then you'd have the one. Yeah. See, so you get a little bit of rubber banding there to, to help you out. Schrodinger's cat. And you have, yeah, you have some cannons pre printed on yours, which do count towards Ooh. the full hold bonus. So in that case, you really only need to cover eight of the spots. Although if you you know cover your cannons up with other stuff, it's not so good. And one other quick chat uh, thing a Schroding. Schrodinger's cat, which is a great handle, says, so the yeah. cannons effectively count as face value, just like gold, but everyone loses whatever the lowest value yeah. is. That is yes. precisely correct. Exactly right. Exactly. All right. right. I think we should move on to our next game. I think, I think we should too. Idea. I think that was a great, this if y'all in chat have any other questions, drop them in. If we have time at the end, we'll, we'll try and grab them and answer anything. But this was ship shape. Uh, again, I think price point for this is what about $30? It's a, it's a $30 game. Ship Shape by Rob Davio. Um, Available now. And there is a really, I will say this, there's a really fun two-player um, AI bot that helps you if you play a two-player game. His name is Captain Happenstance. 
And yeah. he basically is a dummy player and he can really screw you up, but it's hilarious nice. to play with him. So we, will, we can scooch forward from this over yeah. to, I summon the Eric Lang's Ancestry. Ancestry. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, tell us a little bit about this game. Another two to six player game, I yes. think. Um, about same length as Ship Shape. Yeah, hey, this Chris. one is, what's hey, that? Chris. Yeah. Chris. My family tree is better than your family tree. <laughs> My family is better than yours. I'm going to prove it. This is a Ooh. two to six player game. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to play. 20, 25 minutes tops. Um, tile drafting and you're building a family tree. Um, so what we're going to do with this game is um, I'll just, let me just demonstrate with some of these tiles that are here. Um, we are going to have a hand of six of these. You're going to choose one and put it face down and then you're going to pass your hand and then we're going to all reveal the tiles we've chosen. The first one begins your family tree. And then after that, you can connect to your existing tiles any way you want, up, down, left, right, whichever you want. And the way you connect them is, you'll notice at the tops and bottoms of the tiles, there are leaves. So what you do is you place them color matching leaves. So it could be this leaf to this leaf right here, um, or it could be this one to this one right here. Uh, you can also connect heart to heart. So you can make a little marriage um, oh, cute. Okay. Like this. Okay. So that's how you connect them. Now, what you're trying to do is if you put an ancestor in your family tree that has a coin at the bottom, they're going to contribute to your wealth at the end of the round. Um, if you have generations of the same family, they're going to get points for you potentially. So what that means is this is one generation. If the same color is next to it itself, this is the, the blue family is right next to itself. But if I place this one here, this is now two generations because you look um, vertically. So I have one, two generations. If there was someone in between, then they it is not a connected, what the heck? It is not a connected Put it in one. your hand. Thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> so this is still only you considered one generation because it's, it's removed from this one. So what you're really trying to do is make generations of the same family like this, get coins from the bottom, and then make marriages because at the end of three rounds, at the bottom of your uh, player board, you'll notice that there's hearts. Mm -hmm. The number of mm -hmm. marriages you've made across your entire family tree, you'll get a bonus and it's a Fibonacci sequence of scoring. Oh, nice. Up, 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 up. So- um, And this has multiple paths to victory, is that? Yeah, that's exactly right. So yeah. it's the generations is one way to score. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a little bit uh, where at the end of the round, you're gonna look at your neighbors to the left and right. And you're going to compare those families, the colors that are on your player board, yellow, blue, gray, purple, and red. Whoever has the most generations is going to get these fancy little tokens for each of your neighbors that you beat. You're going to put one of these on that color. So you can have a maximum of two per family per round if you beat both of your neighbors. Um, so that's one way is generations. The second way is wealth, because at the end, the coins are going to be uh, worth one point per coin that you have. And then the third way that you win is by those marriages. So there's three different ways that you can go, or you can try to do a little bit of all three in order to win. I will do poorly in all of them. That's always my right? strategy in all games. Uh, so Change you, halfway I'm through, like already, that. my brain's like, okay, so simple, but also I want to match up leaves and colors and hearts, but put the colors <laughs> all in the same row, but also pay attention to what my neighbors are doing. <laughs> That's right. So, okay, I've now dealt six of the ancestor tiles to everybody. So you wanna take a look at them. Um, it's optimal to choose one that has lots of different connection points, maybe a coin, mm. um, and then flip the one you want to put out and stick that out okay, there. I will take this one. And then I recommend drawing a box around, flipping them first, hitting G. We're passing to the left. So package from his Deming, package from his Deming. <gasps> Thank you, package for Mr. Leader. Oh, thank you very much. And then uh, I also recommend you just hover over the stack and hit the number that are in it to pull it in your hand. Makes that at least for me, it works best. That it's way. very handy, yeah, to do. Yeah, that made it really easy. And then we are going to say this is what I learned from Eric Lang. He's so the designer is Eric Lang. He uh, he taught us when you do this, you you go one, two, three, a family tree, and that's when you flip your <laughs> a family. So now we reveal what we've chosen. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. We all okay. have our first okay. ancestor. Now we take a look and see what we have. Once here. placed, now, it may not be moved ever. But you can Good connect any which way you want. It does not have to be upwards. You can connect up, down, left, or right. I'll take this. I wish I knew what was going to be passed to me next. 
would help me make my choice. I guess that's what makes it an oh, interesting. Well, I know exactly what's going to be passed to you next, and <laughs> I'm not telling. Oh, come on. You could give me a little hint. Which allows me to play, say my family motto, Neener, Neener. Neener, Neener, Neener. <laughs> I've heard you say that before, multiple times. It's... Uh, so all right. Are I, you I, ready? Tradition is so important. <laughs> <laughs> and one, two, three, family tree. Family tree. Family, okay. family tree. I have the I have the Marty McFly family where everybody looks the same uh, going on in my family. Guess <laughs> not to think too hard about it. Yeah. Yes. Do does does every connection have to carcass on its way into it, or can you just connect one thing? As long as you have one legal connection, yeah, then you can have dead ends. It's okay. Oh, cool. That's good to know. Thing. That's a great question, Matthew. Yeah, that is a good question. My character is about to get a stepdad or mom. I think is what's happening. Uh, cool. <laughs> My character's about to get a step parent. Uh, oh, wait. We should have four in our hand right now, right? We're drafting four. Okay, you're drafting from four, and then you're going to pass three. I did that thing in a drafting game where I like picked up my things before like a little too <laughs> early. And now I'm like, wait, wh where am I in the draft? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we actually spent some time with talking about how to actually draft in Tabletop Simulator. And I'll say, I think it's going quite well. This is a good system. Would you, you know what you're doing? Now, why did you say something? No! I mean, it can't possibly <laughs> go wrong is what I'm saying. What I'm to... <laughs> okay, these are passed over. Thank you all. Okay. I guess I'm not supposed to look at them until after the... I always cheat and do that. All right, are we ready here? Ready? One, two, three. Family tree. Family tree. Um, I am all, I know, I feel like mine's a little different from everyone else. Oh no, I've realized, oh wait, what have I done? Is there a connection for this? Okay. I have all different <laughs> oh. colors that I am trying to build out in different generations. I hope this is uh, going to work out it okay. It could work. Me. I mean, like just to point out like purple, you've got a purple, but Ken does not and neither do I. So even with one, yeah. you would get two points for purple at the end of the round. Unless oh, someone, yeah, I purple. forgot I need to pay attention to what y'all are doing. <laughs> yes, leaders. <laughs> All right, let me do this one. I'm definitely oh. taking that. Put that there. Sorry, I, uh, I'll be okay. honest. After I said yeah. that, I yeah, don't, don't, don't look what I'm doing. I, Have I'm you messed up, up the drafting <laughs> already? <laughs> after about you, anything. Y'all nope. see what I have to deal with every Wednesday with him? <laughs> it's part of his deception plan. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't know fair. what's going on. <laughs> Flip. One, two, three. Family Family tree. 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 <gasps> oh no. I think I've made a mistake. Good, good, good. I can I connect this purple to this other purple or no, because there's no side connections. You can't no. <laughs> But you could put them up. So this is where if you if you make a mistake like that, the long game is if you attach this person like up here, then mm -hmm. maybe over the course of it, because you're going to work on the same family tree all three rounds. Yeah. Right. So you could put it up here and then work to connect the purple back down over the course of the rest of the rounds. It's a long game. There's no doubt about it. The other nice thing about doing this is you do have a heart. That's so as the true. game goes on, you can start working towards getting marriages, which can, can be very can marry this lucrative. dude off. Yes. Now we Ready. have, we each have two tiles left in our hand. One of them you will choose and one of them will go over in the far corner. If you hover over it, you'll notice it's called the dustbin of history. One of these poor <laughs> relatives is going to be lost to the history books. So let's see. Okay. Put this here and then this person, uh, bye bye Oh, so here's what I've learned. I've got some good up and some good vertical connections going on, but I didn't build myself up very well for sideways connections. Nice. I just threw an uncle away that we don't talk about. Gone. Oh no. He yeah, we don't. We don't talk um, about. They him. will find it. The sideways connection. <laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah, my um, I'll get rid of this uh, this artistic looking fella who that's actually is kind that's of... actually Larry Larry Elmore famed fantasy artist who actually did the character art for all these and you're gonna throw them in history hey wow. i'm not judging I'm, I'm so sorry i'm so sorry my my dude <laughs> all right let's say <laughs> one two three 
Family tree. Family tree. Family tree. Boom. I am connecting. You know what? It's time to mix in some generations here and just get some marriages oh. going. I realized I'm just happy that I managed to successfully draft five tiles. There you go. That's, that's, I've done what I would do. <laughs> and that's good. Okay. Okay. So now we come to scoring. So the first thing that we do is we do our generations. So let's start on the left at the top. And in round one, you'll see there's a yellow eagle. So we each look to the left and right and see if you have beaten your neighbors. If it's a tie, no one gets anything. So in my case, I didn't make any yellow, so I'm not going to get any points, but both Paula and Matthew are going to get a point against me, mm -hmm. but I Ken two. has two, so right. he's going to get two. So I oh, get, I okay, cool. Some people have likened this to the war scoring in tickets, or not tickets, right, Seven Wonders. Yeah, oh, it I've does taken... kind of. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. And those, the generation ones are yeah. up, at the, up on the other side over there. There you go. You. Uh, the it. tile can go right at the top. Okay. Um, okay. Paula. Yeah. Paula has beaten me in the in the. Oh, we're we're doing blue. Doing yes. blue. So mm -hmm. I have one point against Paula, but Matthew's got it. Oh, Matthew, and look, these are uh, Matthew and I are tied. Colorblind friendly as well because they have the different animal symbols. Correct. Yes. Yes. And to and help the, you tell the difference between the which is which. Well. Yeah. Yes. Handy. Uh, Gray, I am tied with you, Paula, but I get one. Paula, you beat me. You get a yes. token for your gray. Well, are you yes. doing really well? Because you seem to be doing well in both games. And I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not surprised by that, but I do like to try and beat you. That's my main goal in streaming <laughs> games with you. Well, look, Blue. this is just because we're just playing one round. Oh, purple. Purple. Purple oh, is uh, Matthew. I have two both. purples. Matthew, you get two points for purple. No, you get one purple, but that's more than my zero and more than Chris's zero. So you get. No, you don't get a two. You get two ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that two back. But I am going to. Take... I stack two ones on top of each that other. That is correct. Yep. Uh -huh. Aha! Take... Thank you for that clarification. And I will take two ones for red. Oh, because we're in generation, generation one. one. Yes. Right. That exactly. makes sense. Okay. All and right. Red, and I beat Matthew. Well, there's no need to talk about it so openly. I mean, that's right over there. <laughs> I <laughs> do not beat Chris uh, and Ken and, and I tie. So, so nothing, right. Right. and then for that. look through your family tree and count up all of the coins that you have. I only have I a couple of measly three. ones. I started with coins. I was like, oh, that's got two coins. I'm doing it. I, I got have three. I five total coins. Who Ooh, even nice. Is. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and hand you a fiver. Thank you. And then uh, we wouldn't do marriages at this point because that's only at mm -hmm. the very end of the game. Okay. Um, I think we're we're running short on we time, are, so I would just yeah. explain that in this in the next round, we would again get six tiles each. We would now pass counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending that's, on where you live. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I got you covered. Thanks, so we man. would do it the opposite way. You pass to the right. That's an even easier way to say it. Um, <laughs> And then you would continue to count at the end. You would do your generations. You would get all of your coins again, including the ones you already counted. Uh, you nice. would do that for the second round. Then the third round, you go back to passing to the left and you do all of the scoring again. And at the end of that third round, that's when you also look at your marriages and you add that in. So that's cool. So it's two coins on a tile in the first round is worth six points, essentially. Yes. That's, yeah, I like and that. so that's all of the amazing. all of the generation tokens that you get in the second and third that have the twos and threes, they're all worth their face value at the end of the game as well. Uh, at oh, the end great. of one round, Paula has nine, Chris has six, and Matthew and I have seven. I win in the go. game right now. Oh my gosh, it's time to end the stream. Go. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in for this uh, showcase of these two Calliope games, uh, Ship Shape and Ancestry. If you are interested in either of them, they're available now. Go check them out on their website, calliopegames.com. Also, keep an eye out for their upcoming 2021 releases, Mass Transit, Enchanted Plumes, and Allegory. If you are looking for games that are have an ease of play a balance of strategy and luck something that you can you know kind of chill your brain out a little bit uh but very still, angry at when you're playing against people they'll have that strategy <laughs> <laughs> filler style games go check their stuff out they're going to be perfect for you thank you so much ken and chris for spending this time with us showing us these games and letting me win sort of we totally did thank you for paying us to do so <laughs>
Hey, oh. no, you're welcome. <laughs> is going to be the Brothers Murph who are playing Versus System or their Versus System is going to be involved from Upper Deck. <laughs> That's up next, so stick around. And all that information you can find on Gen Con Spring Showcase. Dot com. Thank you again so much, Chris. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We've really enjoyed this. It's been great. I think a that's true a... joy. God bless. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.